What is it? Hello, welcome to The Essential Gamer. You're watching What Is It with me, Lee, and what it is is Tales of Iron, a 2D Metroidvania hack and slash em up, uh, soulsy, and all, all the words. All of the words describing a very good looking game. It's very pleasant. It takes place in an, uh, a place where there are epic battles between rats and frogs, and you are but a young rat. A young. Uh, coming of age rat. <laughs> Basically, it's a kingdom of rats against a kingdom of frogs. Uh, the rats sound like clangers. Everything's very pleasant. Everything's absolutely hunky dory in their world of ratty business. Until it's not. And that's where you come in, young prince rat. As you beat. You know, beat up frogs to rebuild the kingdom. <laughs> it's it's a lot better than the premise sounds, trust me. Let's get into it. I'll, I'll tell you. It's, it's very sad, very sad. So, you eat some food, and basically that makes you feel happy because your belly's full. After your belly's full, you'll have a little fight with a dummy. Uh, this is the training of the game. As you can see, it's quite stunningly beautiful. It's a wonderful little thing where you visit blacksmiths and armourers and clansmen and you fast travel or go the long way from place to place, here to there, solving rat mysteries. And like I said, it's very, very pretty, whether you're running across a bridge or fighting a bigger rat. Either way, either way is good. Running across a bridge, fighting a bigger rat. Or chopping through leaves and stuff in sewers and doing rat things. It's just all very pleasant. I mean, it's very sad. And set pieces are very well handled. I mean, one of my favourite parts of the game was how things kept happening and everything that happens looks and feels marvellous. Especially the combat moments. But I'll get to them in a minute because it does the smaller moments well as well. Everything looks so pretty. All right, combat. Combat is hard, combat is punishing, combat is brilliant. It's so simple. You get a light attack, a heavy attack, uh, a counter, or a riposte, if you want to use the, the right sort of wording. And the rest of it all depends on numbers. It's very much stat crunching with hats and cloves and swords, weapons and shields and blah, blah, blah. All the things have more resistance or damage against certain enemy types. With the gameplay basically taking a break to do a little bit of platforming and puzzling in a typical manner before getting back to the brutal murder of frogs and other animals. And it is continuous. You have a non-stop barrage of enemies to destroy and sometimes it does feel a little bit like the weapons are... You, you get given a new weapon and this is the only thing you are to use for now until you meet a boss that you will have to use this thing to beat and then so on and so forth as new things are unlocked throughout the story. The story of which I've now played about four hours worth. I've took my time though, I've returned to a lot of different areas, I've gone and had a look at many, many things. I fought many of the bosses, they're all brilliant. Some of them you don't even have to fight, but I decided to have a fight with them anyway because why not? That's what you do in a game like this, right? Especially when you feel, like, accomplished and the top of your game. Of course, this isn't until you're not, and the game reminds you, hey, actually, I'm pretty tough. Which it is. You're going to die a lot. I mean, you're going to die a lot. If it's not from enemies within the game, it will be from environmental hazards, which just appear out of nowhere and murder you. Or big dudes with big helmets on that murder you. Over and over and over and over again so it's it's a very hectic game when it gets into full swing but that's what's so brilliant about Tales of Iron because it's a very relaxing version of this kind of game it's really satisfying everything looks great everything sounds fantastic the combat is weighty without being too taxing you'll always be able to best your enemy eventually you just have to stick with it I'm a fan. In fact, I'm such a fan that I'm going to continue the playthrough 
that I started on stream. Until it's finished, I will be streaming the rest of this game, hopefully uh, on Tuesday. I don't know when this video is going to come out, but on a Tuesday, and when it's me, I will be streaming Tales of Iron until it is finished. At least the main story. Because I love it, and I want more people to see it. The devs have done a great job. I think it's Oddbug Studios. Done a great job. It's just, everything about it is great. Yeah, there's some tropes in there. You will find sort of boss types that you've seen in other games, and there's a few bits and bobs that have definitely been borrowed or inspired from. But that's definitely not a bad thing, because they're all implemented really well. And when things work, well, they work. Good. Huzzah. So Tales of Iron is a very pleasant looking 2D side-scrolling Metroid Vayner stab em slash em hack em up where you play as a rat, if that's your kind of thing. I reckon you should go get the game. I mean, what else do you want from me? I don't, know, I don't know what else to tell you. If it's not your kind of thing, don't get it, obviously. I mean, it's up to you. I'm not, I'm not forcing you to do anything, but if I was forcing you, I'd say go get it because I really enjoyed the game. I mean, what, you know, what is this? What am I, what, a clown to you? <laughs> so as always, if this video has been any good to you, do the likes and subscribes and stuff, and if it hasn't been any good to you, well, tell me in the comments, and I'll have a look, I'll let you usurp my kingdom, and then I will rebuild from the ashes something much greater than you could ever possibly comprehend in your tiny, non-abstract minds. Alright.